Oh, no. That mean old man has another video out. Yeah, yeah. Well, the mean old man has some stunning new information to share with you. This is an exciting video. You know, this has happened a number of times where I think he is done giving us information that has been so invaluable, incredible, it's priceless. And I prepare myself to go into repetition mode, which I'll gladly do because this information has to stay out there as a, as a contrast to the nonsense that is being taught in the church today. And I've, on several occasions, been ready to do that when something else fell. A new piece of information came in that I had never thought about before. And the same thing happened about a week and a half ago. Every single church, every single Christian at this time, having us having seen already one of the signs that he told us about prior to his coming, prior to war in heaven, we saw it in 2017, the Revelation 12 sign. We may be seeing the second sign, distress of nations. We'll keep an eye on it. We are on the clock, and the church should be focused about what is it that the Church of Philadelphia was doing correctly to cause the Lord to say, because you have kept my command or word. The Greek word there is logos, statement, speech, saying, command. Because you kept something I said about, and that next Greek word is usually uh, translated as perseverance, regarding perseverance, or patient endurance. But that Greek word technically means remaining behind, coupled with perseverance and endurance. Because you have kept my command or word about that, I will keep you from the hour of testing that's about to come on the whole world. That's amazing. He is guaranteeing that Philadelphia will be some of the elect that he will gather when he shows up on that day. And everyone should want to know, well, what is it that they did right that he loves so much? And I have in the past said, well, it appears to me that it's this, watch, a general call to watch and stay ready. And that's what I've always said. I didn't really take into consideration that it might be pointing to a specific verse. Now, I'm not wrong as it turns out. It does very much include watching. But about a week and a half, maybe two weeks ago, I wasn't looking for this. I was looking for something else. And I stumbled onto it, and I was like, oh, that's it. This is it. This is what he's talking about. Because if he is going to be talking about a specific verse when he says, because you have kept my logos, my word about something, if that's a specific verse and not just a general idea, there will be a clue. There will be a clue to help us. He's not going to expect us to just randomly guess and get it right. Because, you know, you could come up with anything. You could say, well, um, we're supposed to forgive our enemies and forgive wrongs done to us. So maybe that's what he's referring to. No. No. Although that's true and important. No. He is connecting what they are keeping to his coming. Because you have kept some knowledge about my coming, I will keep you from the hour of testing, that trial that's coming. I will keep you because of that. It's related to that event. Just as in the previous church letter to Sardis, they're not doing something that they should be doing. And he says, you need to wake up because if you don't start doing what you should be doing, when I come... I will come as a thief upon you, and you will not know the hour of my coming. In other words, because you are not listening to me about that day when it happens, you're not going to know what's going on. You're not going to be ready. You're not going to be watching, and that is the situation the church is in. So there's a clue. 
built in that I missed. I love it when we stumble upon a clue left by the Holy Spirit, and he left us a massive clue to know what the Philadelphians kept and guarded. Watch this. Now, he has told the Church of Philadelphia he is coming soon because these letters are to the church on the earth just before that big day when he shows up to send his angels out to gather the elect. And he tells them, because you have kept my command about remaining behind, because that's the position the church is in. We are not left behind. We are remaining behind until he comes for us. And he says this, because you have kept my word, my logos, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. I am coming soon. What did they keep? As it turns out, he is talking about Luke 21, 36. That's the verse that begins with, watch always and pray. Now, dot, dot, dot means we'll get to what we're supposed to pray about because there's, there's an obstacle that we've got to deal with. That's the verse he's talking about. Why do I say that's the verse? Watch the connection between what I just read in the letter to Philadelphia and the sentence or two just prior to Luke 21, 36. Listen to this. This is awesome. Just before Luke 21, 36, we are told to watch ourselves lest we get distracted by the world, fall into drunkenness or some other distraction, okay? And then he says, that day will come upon you suddenly like a trap, for it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. It's exactly what he just told the Church of Philadelphia. He will keep you from the hour of trial that is about to come on the whole earth, the whole world. This is the exact same event that he's talking about in that letter. He is connecting his command that's coming next with that letter to the Philadelphians. Now, for those of you who can't see the connection and you go, well, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I kind of see. I, I think you might be right. This is still a command, what he's about to say in Luke 21, 36. It's a command that we are expected to do. Now, if you follow the church, they'll tell you, you don't need to follow that command. That's not for us. That's for people at the very end. That's the danger and the heresy that they teach. This is for us. That's why it's in the letter to the Church of Philadelphia. It's a church age command, and they're keeping it, Sardis is not keeping it. It's exactly what's happening on the world right now. There are those who understand that we better be glued to his commands and teachings about his coming, and the general church is not interested. That's Sardis, and that's what's going on. Now, the command, there's a problem with this command because there are two versions of it. About a year ago, I spotted that. I didn't know that Luke 21, 36 was the exact command that the Philadelphians were keeping. But I spotted that this is an important command, but there are two versions. Which one do we adhere to? Which one do we follow? Because they're quite different, and we want to get this right. We want to do exactly what the Philadelphians are doing. We want to... Ad Listen to and keep this command. Let me show you the two different versions. Well, let's do a quick recap before we get to the two versions, because I want you to see this. Make sure you understand what's going on here. This is spectacular information for us. In the letter to Philadelphia, he says, look, I'm going to keep you from this trial that's coming on the whole world because you kept a command about it. And that's going to keep you from this thing that's coming on the whole world, this test, this trial. So we go to the Olivet Discourse, and he's talking about the same thing. He's saying, this is going to come as, as a snare on the whole world, everyone. But you, you can stay awake. You need to stay awake. 
and not fall into a pattern of not being alert. And then he issues the command, and in the command he says, this is how you escape these things and stand before the Son of Man. In, in the letter to Philadelphia, it says you've kept a command that will keep you from what's coming on the earth. And in the Olivet Discourse, he tells us what the command is, and that will allow us to escape these things that are coming on the world. The church should have put this all together for us. But of course, since they don't believe anything in the Olivet Discourse is for us, they disregarded it. Now, there are two versions of this command, and we want to get this right. Let's start with this one. I'll use the NASB as the, an example of the first version, although there are many other translations that I could use. It's a very popular version. It's a very good Bible. Here's what he says in Luke 21, 36, according to the NASB. But stay alert at all times. At all times. Literally in the Greek, at every season. Don't stop doing this, he says. Praying, this is important, that you will have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and stand before the Son of Man. He is saying you are going to need strength. Now, we're going to put that in context later, okay? Do you see that? Pray that you have strength not to be distracted let the world distract you. Pray that you have strength. You're staying awake, you're watching, and you're asking for strength. Makes total sense. There's a second version. We're going to use another very popular, very good Bible, the New King James Version. Here's what it says. Watch, therefore. They went with watch instead of stay awake. That's perfectly fine. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Well, the other version says, pay, pray for strength to escape all these things. This one says, pray always that you be counted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. That's quite a difference. Now, we want to get this right. And a year ago when I spotted this difference, I... I made a incomplete analysis of what was going on. I was, I was right, but I should have kept going. What I noticed was, as it turns out, they are two different Greek words. One is using Greek word 2729, which means strength. It's a word that's very much like nakao, that that is used 17 times in the book of Revelation that Jesus uses in each and every one of the letters. Overcome, prevail, have the strength to overcome, prevail. Okay, that's Greek word 2729. In the New King James Version, the Greek word used is not that word. It's Greek word 2661, which does mean worthy. Now, a year ago, I said, well... The oldest manuscripts go with strength. They go with Greek word 2729, not Greek word 2661. So I thought that the King James Version using the Textus Receptus as its source material got it wrong. Okay? I need to retract that. There's more to it than that. And this past week and a half, once I realized how important this verse is, I decided to really look into it and discover what is going on. Now, I'll just tell you up front, we're about to get into some weeds, as they say. We're, we're going to deal with some technical issues about Bible construction, but that's fine. We need to know a little bit about how our Bibles are put together, because the problem does not lie with Textus Receptus or the critical text. It lies elsewhere, okay? And I want you to see this, so bear with me. This will not take long, but I want you to see the problem, and at the end, we're going to resolve it, okay? So here we go. So if somebody was going to put together a new Bible and publish it, there are several steps that have to be accomplished. Let's reverse engineering so I can show you where the problem is, I want you to understand this, before it would go to press, that Bible would need a translation committee 
that would translate the Greek into whatever language the Bible is meant for, in our case, English. You would bring in experts who are expert in both Greek and English. Okay, the problem that we have in Luke 21, 36 does not lie at this level. There's not a problem here. Sometimes there is a problem with the translators. That's why it's good to check several versions. Let's go to the next step. Before they can translate the Greek into English, they need a Greek text. That publishing company is not going to put together a brand new Greek text. That would be taking on way too much work. There are many Greek texts where the scholars went through the manuscripts and the uh, the remnants, the, the, the fragments, the minuscules, the... Oh, I can't ever remember with how to pronounce that. Unchal. I'll think of it in a minute. Unchal. There's a way of pronouncing that that doesn't look natural at first. Unchal. We have all kinds of little snippets that need to be collated into a complete New Testament. And that's what Textus Receptus is. That's what the critical text, the Nestle Alon text is. There's the majority text. There's the Westcott and Hort Greek text and on and on and on you will decide which Greek text you will base your Bible on, and then that's what is translated. The problem is not at that level either. Nothing, I, at, a year ago, I thought that Textus Receptus had made a mistake. As it turns out, in this case, they did not make a mistake. Erasmus, a brilliant guy, a, what was he? A Dutch scholar, absolutely brilliant, put together Textus Receptus in the early 1500s. He not only put together a complete Greek text, he put together a new Latin text because he felt the Latin Vulgate needed updating and he could do it in the early 1500s. How's that possible? If Erasmus was alive today and I had a conversation with him, he'd be so bored with me. You know, he'd be going on about the linguistic differences of various ancient languages. And when he finally stopped for a second, I'd go, e Erasmus? Erasmus? Guess what? I made a pound cake out of this box of cake mix from HEB. E Erasmus? W why are you crying? Yeah. Yeah, when you reach that 80-point IQ difference or more, you're going to bore the smarter guy. Brilliant guy. And I thought, though, he had made a mistake. As it turns out, he didn't. The mistake is at the previous level. All Greek texts are going to be based dominantly by either the Alexandrian family of Greek manuscripts or the Byzantine family of Greek manuscripts, parchments, codexes, minuscules, all of the things that we have are going to come from those two text types, they're called, either the Alexandrian or the Byzantine family. All Greek texts are going to be dominated by one or the other. Textus Receptus is dominated by Byzantine, the Byzantine family, almost exclusively. The critical text, the Nestle Alond text, is dominated by the Alexandrian Greek text type. And the proponents for each make a case. One is not good and the other is evil. They're both good. It's like the difference, trying to decide the difference between what? Uh, uh, Brady or Joe Montana as your all-time favorite quarterback or best quarterback or whoever. You're looking at two great systems, but you're going to pick one. And that's where the problem lies. The Alexandrian Greek text use Greek word 2729 in Luke 21, 36. The Byzantine family uses Greek word 2661. That's where the problem lies. Since Texas Receptus was reliant on the Byzantine, it simply noted that Greek word 2661 is included in Luke 21, 36. So now we've got to try and decide, well, which Greek text type do we go with? The Alexandrian proponents will say the Alexandrian texts are older, and older is better. 
And just when you think that's good enough for you, the Byzantine proponents come along and say, well, yeah, that may be true, and it is true, but if you put all of the Greek texts we have, all of them, from the, from the Greek uh, Alexandrian text to the Byzantinian, the Byzantine Greek text, you put them all in a room, 90% of them are going to be from the Byzantine family of Greek texts, 90%. And their proponents say the reason there is such a predominance and dominance of Byzantine texts over Alexandrian texts is because the scribes who were going to make copies picked the best one, and they picked the Byzantine text, and that's why there are so many of them. Look, I'm not capable of making a decision based on that stuff. That's, that's out of my pay grade. Okay, that's out of my price range. They both make strong points. So I looked at this problem in a slightly different way because I'm not going to be able to resolve it. I'll listen to Byzantine proponents and I go, yeah, maybe I should go with the Byzantine. Then I listen to Alexandrian proponents and I go, you know, they make a good case too. I, I think the solution is that when you look at this verse, because it's so important, it's a command, and I believe it's the command he's talking about that the Philadelphians have kept, and because they have kept that, he's keeping them from the hour of trial that's coming on the whole world. If you look at, at the context of this verse, they're both saying the same thing. If you go with strength, he is saying you're going to pray for strength so that you can overcome the world in trying to distract you from the truth of his coming. If you say worthy, worthy doesn't mean here in context, your righteousness has to reach a certain level. Your holiness has to reach a certain level to be found worthy. That's not what it's saying. If you overcome the world with the strength necessary, you are worthy. That's what he's looking for. He's looking for people who have the strength to overcome what the world throws at them in regards to the teaching of his coming. They're going to persuade you that it's not important. You need strength. You pray for strength. If you overcome what the world will throw at you, you are worthy to go in the rapture. That, I believe, is what he is saying. Either way, both of them are clearly pointing to us that we need to be proactive. And it's not just what the world throws at us. This is my point. It's what the church is throwing at us. They're saying the same thing the world is. Oh, don't pay any attention to what he teaches about his coming. It's not for you. If you do that, you will not pay heed to this order, this command. Watch and pray always. In every season, we're supposed to do that to have the strength to overcome the people and the things of this world who will try and stand in our way. If you do that, you are worthy to escape these things that are coming on the world. Stand before the Son of Man. That's how I believe we harmonize this. I think they're both in their own way correct. But there is a difference, and I wanted to bring that to you. It's too important. We want to get this right.